We're here at the start of stage five of the Giro d'Italia and we thought it would be a good opportunity to explain some of the things about the team cars. Now as you see, we're at Omega Pharma Quickstep today and that's because we think that Mark Cavendish might be the one taking the win. As you can see, Omega Pharma have two team cars. Team car one, team car two. The reason they have two team cars is that this one, team car one, follows the top riders all day. That one, team car two, sits in the second half of the convoy, except if there's a breakaway featuring an Omega Farmer Quickset rider, at which point that one goes to the front of the bunch. In the mountains, however, it's normally team car two that hangs back with the riders in the Gruppetto at the back. So these numbers on the back dictate what number the team car sits in the convoy. So for example, Omega Farmer Quickstep here are not very well up on the GC. So they're number 16 in the convoy, whereas the team with the pink jersey, the Maglia Rosa, will have team car one. Team car two, sits 16 in the second part of the convoy. So in reality, it's team car 32. Now, on this roof rack, there's a full complement of nine bikes. So every rider on the team has a spare. They're not just put on in a random order. As you see here, this is Mark Cavendish's bike. And the reason it's there is because that's the easiest place for the mechanic to get it off. The mechanic sits here in the back, so he's got enough room to put spare wheels, and he's also able to get to the boot so he can get to the rider's wet bags, so which is where they keep their gloves, their gilets, their arm warmers, things like that. So Mark Cavendish's bike is there. The next most important rider on the team, so in this case Michael Gerlis, his bike goes there, so that's the second quickest place. Round here, so that's the third lowest rank, that's the fourth lowest rank, and in the middle there we've got Julien Vermotte. Unfortunately Julien is probably the lowest ranked rider in the team. He's not going to get a spare bike in an emergency. He's going to be the one that gives up his wheels for Cavendish, he's the one who gives up his bike depending on who needs it. If you come close here, you'll see that name there. Now, Leo is a Belgian guy that makes every single roof rack for virtually every single team in the Pro Peloton. They all look exactly like this. This is a particularly nice example of a roof rack. As you can see, he's uh, embossed his name in there. Now, Leo's been doing this for a long, long time, and he actually has his own private museum of bikes and jerseys from the Pro Peloton. So he's a pretty cool guy. If you see in here, the mechanic sits over there on the far side and he keeps two pairs of wheels there along with some tools and a toolbox. So those are the ones that he can get out really quickly so he doesn't need to get anything off the roof. If there's a crash and they're not entirely sure whether any of their riders are involved in it, every mechanic from every team car will jump out with a pair of wheels just in case one of the riders needs it. So obviously this is where the director sportif sits. You can see in there, they've got a television, so they can watch the race live as it happens. And potentially, they can then tell the riders what's going on when the riders themselves don't actually know. You'll also see they've got their race radio there. They'll have two race radios, one to talk to the, to the race referees, the race commissaires, and to find out what's going on in the race, and then another one to talk to the riders. Finally, the boot. So all these bags in here are the riders' wet bags. As we mentioned earlier, inside these bags, There'll be leg warmers, arm warmers, gilet, hats, gloves. So each rider has a wet bag. You can see it's named up, Julien Fermat. His bike might be in a poor position on the roof rack, but at least his wet bag's in pole position. In a race like Milan San Remo that we saw this year, those wet bags would have been empty because the riders would have worn every item of clothing in there. Well, I think stage 19 looks particularly exciting to watch on paper. It's only a short stage, I think it's just under 140 kilometres, but it goes over two climbs which peak at over 2,500 metres, the Gavia and then the Stelvio.